The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Now, Jack, you see a lot of soil samples here in Ontario. What do you see as the main, I guess, trends in soil fertility in this province? Yes, Bernard, we see a, a lot of soils come through the lab that are increasingly testing lower for nutrients. Uh, both our st statistics as well as the International Plant Nutrition Institute, which does surveys every four to five years, are showing that by and large soil fertility is declining both the average soil test and the percent of samples testing on the low range of the scale. Now for many samples, if, if you're testing very high to start with, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, however, we're seeing so many testing what we would call uh, below a critical level, meaning that the crop is dependent upon fertilizer to achieve optimum yields, uh, which means that you're relying on the inputs as opposed to the soil feeding the crop. Right. Now, the big decliners in your presentation today, you talked about potassium, you talked about uh, phosphorus. We did mention potassium and phosphorus. Those are the ones that we think of uh, first as macronutrients. Um, many people are reluctant to test the micronutrients because they consider that it's not a problem, um, which is by and large true. However, for example, today we talked about some wheat that was showing copper deficiency. Copper deficiency is almost unheard of in Ontario, uh, but you know, given 200 years of agriculture, we're pulling out a little bit of nutrient every year over that whole uh, uh, term of growing, and eventually we're going to start getting below the soil supply. You can't keep taking money out of the bank without putting in a deposit from time to time. And that's what I was going to ask. I mean, we talked about yields. Obviously, whether it's corn, soybeans, wheat, those yields keep going up and up. We're seeing bigger numbers. Let's talk about the removal rates and the draw. And are we, as I say, are we supplementing, are we making up for those removals? Well, that's what I wonder sometimes. Uh, I think that everybody's aware of the concept of yield removal or crop removal, uh, the, the portion of nutrient that the harvest is removing from the soil. Um, however, I don't know if we always account for it um, by doing the math on the yields, because as yields are increasing, we're pulling out more. Another thing I think is a bit of a, uh, is a bit misleading is with soybeans, where the research shows they don't respond to additional nutrient. So I think sometimes the takeaway message is beans don't need fertilizer. And that may be true, but the part we forget is that beans take out a lot of nutrient. They're taking out about a pound and a half of potassium per bushel, for example. So a 60 bushel crop is taking out 90 pounds of potassium fertilizer. And I know that we're not putting that much back on a soybean crop. Right. Let's talk about organic matter. Obviously, you, you're, in those tests, you're testing organic matter. We're, what's the trend in organic matter in this province? The trend is slightly down. Um, now, as somebody who sees the stats and publishes those and talks about it, I, I don't want to erase any sort of alarm bell. I, I, I don't want the um, takeaway message to be that farmers are doing a poor job. They're not. Farming has to be economical at the end of the day. However, um, crops such as soybeans, that don't put a lot of residue back into the system and, and some soils that are um, best or most suited for growing soybeans, uh, they're seeing a decline in organic matter. Organic matter is something that's very difficult to build. Uh, we measure it in the laboratory on a percent by weight. And uh, as most know that organic matter is inherently very light in nature. So even a 1% organic matter doesn't seem like much, but given 2 million pounds of soil in an acre, every 1% is 20,000 pounds of organic matter. So it's quite a lot of volume. Now in your presentation today, um, you talked about wheat, and on the wheat school we should talk about wheat. Um, you know, getting wheat in the rotation, you talked about Dr. David Hooker's work, and you know, the yield imp impact it can make here. We can make an, um, an impact on organic matter, fertility. Talk about, I guess, the benefits from a soil perspective. Sure, I'd be glad to. And I, I recognize that growing wheat, there are challenges, and especially a, a year like this where we had so much winter kill, unprecedented amounts. Uh, it makes it difficult for people to uh, decide to put wheat in the rotation. However, uh, the research has shown that by growing wheat, it increases the yields of both soybeans and corn. Um, it, it, it's adding a different plant to the system and having different roots, having different um, residues also helps increase the soil biological life. The, the biology is decomposing the organic matter into 
things that they secrete like glues and gums and waxes that really help build soil structure. It's the sticky substances that, that keep soil uh, well adhered and gives it a better aggregate stability. Growing wheat is one of the things that um, may not pay back exactly in just the wheat crop, but it also helps pay back over the term of the soybeans and the corn that are having increased yields because of it, not to mention soil health and long-term uh, improvement of organic matter and, and healthy soils. Jack, final question, that is, you know, about wheat. You know, when we talk about cover crops and cereals and the importance of, you know, th that can play in organic matter. Um, how should growers be viewing wheat and other cereals, you know, when it comes to soil health and the, and the future of their soils? Right, well, growing a wheat crop, um, it isn't just about the wheat, but it allows you other opportunities. Um, Post-harvest, you can do soil sampling, which I think is something that most growers um, appreciate the importance of, but sometimes they don't get around to doing it. And having that, that cycle of every three years soil testing after wheat is important. The other thing with wheat is it allows uh, for better establishment of cover crops after harvest. Uh, we're all fairly familiar with red clover, uh, but there's other cover crops that can play a huge role. Uh, now it's, it's not easy picking the right uh, species and management and from an equipment standpoint and managing the residue and not wanting that cover crop to go to seed that could create a weed problem. However, I think that uh, in this day and age we're starting to recognize that soil shouldn't be bare. Having something growing all the time uh, improves the overall biology of the soil and, and in fact soil is its own ecosystem. Um, and putting wheat in the rotation really helps with that.